Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at creating an S3 bucket for web server hosting using CloudFormation. So let's get to it. So what I have in front of me right now is the main web page for AWS CloudFormation. Now essentially what CloudFormation is, is it allows you to specify a templating file. Uh, you can either use JSON or YAML to create a bunch of what is referred to as resources in the AWS infrastructure. Now, a resource is anything from an S3 bucket or a code build instance or a code pipeline instance or anything else that's in AWS, you know, such as creating a role or even a policy, or we could go as far as creating a database, any of those kinds of things. But for this video, we're just going to be looking at, at S3 buckets. Now, to get an understanding of what it looks like, what I've got in front of me right here is some documentation about how to create an S3 bucket using this uh, CloudFormation template. And the type of language I'm going to be using to write this template is referred to as YAML. And YAML is not a markup language. And it actually stands for YAML uh, a ain't markup language, I think it's what it means. YAML ain't markup language. I think that's what it stands for. So it's not a markup language, it's basically a descriptive language. So for the S3 bucket, we've got a whole bunch of things that we can configure here, and we'll be configuring a few of these in our CloudFormation template, all right? Now, I'm gonna, before I actually go off and write the template, I'm just gonna come back to my S3 console, and I'm gonna remove this Angular DevOps bucket that we just created. So first you have to empty it. So if you've never used S3 before, you could not delete a bucket unless it's empty. So I'm gonna empty that bucket. And now I'm gonna delete the bucket. So Angular DevOps, and confirm. And the bucket is gone, okay? So let's get into building ourselves a CloudFormation template to create that bucket that we just deleted. So I'm back in the code, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my source here, and in the main directory, I'm gonna create a new folder, and I'm just gonna call it infrastructure. And inside of here, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new file and call it, let's say, Angular, app dot yaml all right so this yaml file is going to create uh, be uh what we define our cloud formation template in okay for our angular s3 bucket now with any cloud formation template we have to specify the version of the template so the first thing we normally write is aws template uh, format version and for this particular template, we're gonna be using version 2010.09-09. Okay, so that's the first thing you'll ever write for an, a CloudFormation template, is the format version for that template. The next thing we're gonna write is just a brief description of what this template is. And I'm just gonna say, this template will create the Angular, uh, the, sorry, the S3 bucket that will host our Angular application. Straightforward, pretty cool. Next step is to define the resources that we're going to use in this template or we're going to create or update in this template. So you just do that by typing resources. Now, resources is basically an object so to speak. So it has properties on it. So to mirror that inside of a template, you go to the next line and then you tab forward one. And this is now the pro one of the properties of the resources object. Now, because I'm creating an S3 bucket, I'm gonna name one. So the property is Angular App Bucket. Now this can be named whatever you want because this is the actual name of the resource that we're creating. Not the name of the bucket, 
the name of the resource that the S3 bucket will be known as in cloud formation. So this is also an object. So if I come down, I tap across again, I have to tell CloudFormation what type this resource is. So I just put in type and my computer has gotten stuck here for a second. Okay, back. It just took a little bit there to type. So I'm gonna specify a type and I'm just gonna put in here AWS colon colon S3 colon colon bucket. Now, if you saw in the documentation at the very top, that was the type that I was looking at all right, when I was setting up the properties or looking at the properties for a S3 bucket. So with that said, the next property for this is called properties. And this property is also an object. So now we're gonna specify the properties that we want to change on the S3 bucket. So one of the properties we want to specify is the name of the bucket. So we want to give it a name. Now I'm going to mention in the next video uh, how to make this better, but for now I'm just going to type in Angular DevOps production. All right, so I'm actually specifying the environment in here, which is not a good thing, but I will explain in the next video how we can resolve this problem. So for now I'm just going to put that and then I'm gonna put in this thing called tags. Now, tags essentially is a way of collecting or relating resources together. So you can add tags to multiple resources and then in AWS, you can actually look for a specific tag and it will show all the resources that have that tag. So say for example, I wanna find all the resources that are based on a certain application name, right? So it could be that I'm creating a full application, not just an Angular application, and it could have a database, it could have an API, it could have a website, all that stuff is related to each other. I can use the same tag across all three, and when I look up that tag, I can see all the resources in AWS that match that tag. So for this example, I'm just gonna put uh, two tags. Now to create an individual tag entry, you, you have to put a dash there. And basically what we're saying now is this tags thing is more of an array or a list of items. And for a tag, we have to specify a key. So the key in this, this case, I'm gonna call application name. And then we also have to specify a value. So a value and then go, let's say um, Angular DevOps. All right, that's what I'm just gonna call this application. Now that's one entry. So if I want a second entry, I'm gonna come back, add another dash, put key, and then I'm gonna put the company. So if I was servicing multiple companies, I may need to always include the company, and I'm just gonna put my company name here at the moment. You guys can do whatever you like. Now, the important piece to the puzzle here that we saw in the previous video is that we need to set this bucket up as a website, all right? So we can do that in CloudFormation by using the website configuration property. Inside this web, website configuration property, we're gonna set the index document. We're gonna set it to index.html. And also the error document will be set to index.html, okay? And that's pretty much it. So hopefully we can now run this. So how do we run it? Well, I'll show you that right now. So I'm back in my AWS uh, console and currently I'm showing S3 because I deleted that bucket. But to get to CloudFormation, I'm just gonna come up to services here and I'm gonna choose down in the management tools, CloudFormation. And when you get there, you may see something like this screen because I do not have any CloudFormation templates at the moment loaded into this account. You'll get a screen that looks like this. now. Just to quickly mention this, 
cloud formation works with stacks. Now, as I said, a stack is more of, you know, the ability to group resources together. So when you apply a cloud formation template, like we're about to do, we're creating a cloud formation stack. All right, it's just the terminology that they use, but it's important to understand anyway, because if you're talking to someone, they'll say, oh yeah, I need a new stack for this, right? And that would really mean you need a new template to define whatever they need, okay? So that's the first thing. Understand that CloudFormation deals with stacks. So we're gonna create a stack now. And in this template selection screen, you can actually do this design template thing. Now you, you can look at this yourself. It's a visual editor, but I don't find it overly useful. So at the moment, I don't really use it. Uh, you can also choose a template from an S3 bucket if you have one, or you can choose a sample. So this is a sample one that you can choose just to see how it works. You can upload one, which is what we'll be doing. And as I said before, you can choose one from an S3 bucket. Now we don't have anything in S3 at the moment, so I'm gonna be uploading. So choose file. And I'm gonna come back a step into my Angular DevOps root directory, go into infrastructure and pick my angular app.yaml and go okay. Cool. So that's now ready to be uploaded. I'll just click next. So now you get a stack. Uh, it'll ask you to specify the name of the stack. So I'm just going to put here Angular DevOps Production Stack. All right, just just to be unique, and click Next. And this screen, I'm not going to mention too much at the moment about this screen, just because it's to do with you know, a little bit more complicated stuff when we're actually running stacks. We can actually limit, you know who, who uh, what kind of access the stack needs to have. You can set up monitoring, you can fire off alarms so other people know that you're firing a stack and all that other kind of stuff. Not really important at this stage, okay? We may mention this a little bit later. So click next. So we've got the review. As you can see, the description that I had in my template is now here. And we can see that our template has also been uploaded to S3. So if I come over now and I open up a new window in S3, there should be a new bucket that's been created over here. And you can see now there's a new S3 bucket. Now, I normally do everything inside of Asia Pacific Sydney. I forgot to change my, uh, to change my region up here. So that's the other thing too, to choose regions, you can come up here and change it. I've already gone halfway through this. I'm gonna be deleting this stack anyway, so I don't really care. So I'm just gonna go create. And what happens now is it goes through a creation process. So if I come in here now and I click on this link, we can now see the events that are going on. So at the moment, it's in the middle of creating that S3 bucket. And the logical idea is the name that we gave it in the template. So the resource creation has been initialized. Here's the template that I that I uploaded. So it shows you the actual template that's being run. Parameters we'll get to in the next video. Uh, tags that is the same thing as S3 bucket tags. You can apply tags to your CloudFormation scripts as well. Rollback triggers I'm not going to mention at this point. Policy neither. And chain sets is not really that important for this first phase of our DevOps experience. Resources is basically the resources that are being created or updated, and outputs is something we'll see in the next video as well. Okay, so just to give you an idea. Now the problem is this thing doesn't update in real time, so you do have to refresh in the console. So I'm gonna refresh it. And now we get a create complete. So it's nice and green, so we can see that everything has ran and ran successfully, which is good. So now if we come back over to the S3 bucket, uh, the S3 environment, we can't see it yet, but if I click refresh, we now have the Angular DevOps production bucket. 
Okay, so if I now click into here, we'll see there's no files in it because we haven't uploaded any files. But if I come over to properties, we'll see that website hosting will be configured here. So it's got a tick. If I click on it, you can see the index and the error documents being specified. And if I click on this, we actually get a 403, but that's okay at the moment. So what I'm gonna do now, oh, before I do that, I'm gonna mention these tags. So we added a few tags of our own. So we had company and there's Lara Digital, and then we had the application name and it has Angular DevOps. Now there's three other tags that are in here. Just understand that they're to do with CloudFormation and how CloudFormation can remember what's grouped inside of itself. So this is more if you need to roll back or delete uh, a stack. Don't remove these, because if you remove these, it won't remember what resources was in the stack. It's just an internal mechanism by CloudFormation. Just don't touch it. Anyway, coming back over to Overview, I'm now gonna upload the files. So I'm gonna come back to my Angular DevOps directory. I'm gonna go back into the disk folder, Angular DevOps, and then upload those files again. Takes a little bit to load. And I come next. Once again, I'll give read access and click upload. And let them do their thing. So now all the files are uploaded. So if I come back over now to my bucket, you'll see once again, we've got our Angular website and the name of the bucket is Angular DevOps Production, which is at the front of the URL here. So that's it for this video. So the next video, we're gonna look at a couple of improvements we can make, or a couple of things that we can do in our CloudFormation template, just to make things a little easier for ourselves and make things a little bit easier to customize. So I'll see you in the next video.